Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video and welcome to another video of the Golang series that we are running on the YouTube channel. Hope your day was awesome, let's get started and talk about the maps in the Golang. Now if you have heard about any other programming language and have dealt up with the key and value pairs, this is exactly the same. Some languages call them as objects, some call them as maps, and there are a couple of other names as well. But basically the information is stored in the key value pair and it has its own advantage. You don't have to access all the information in a sequence order. You can just access the key and its value is given to us. It's a really great data structure that you will be using quite a lot especially in the cases when you will be dealing with the databases. You pack up every information which is required in the database model, like name, email, ID, and password, and bunch of other information, you wrap them up, put all of the information in the map data structure, key and values, and then just talk to your database after that. So there is a little bit thing that you should be aware of that in the Golang. So let me just go ahead and work on with that. So I'll be working on the file 08maps.go and let's have this one. So I'm going to call this one as go main. There we go. And now if I go up into this main, first and foremost, I'd like to talk about two things. The one is actually this make and another is the new keyword. So make, we have already seen that once, but I would like to mention that what is the difference between this new and make, and I would like to make some notes for you so that you can refer them later on. So first and foremost, what do we have is this new. Let me talk about this one. It's actually super easy. I'm gonna write very short notes for you. So when you use the new keyword, it only allocates a memory for you. There is actually no initialization of memory in that. So that is the one thing that you always need to remember. Remember. While on the other hand, the make is a little bit different. It actually allocate, if I can write that, it also it allocates as well as initialize the memory for you. And that simply means that there is going to be simply a non-zeroed storage. And I know this sounds a little bit of the jargon to you, but let me tell you what exactly this means and what is the difference between these make and new. Majority of the times when you are working with these maps, you will be using make because it not only allocates the memory, it also initializes it so that you don't get these non-zeroed storage error. Let me show you by an example. It's pretty easy to understand. So let's just say that we declare a simple score and this is, assume this is an application which stores the score of a player. And then we simply use map. Map has two things to carry on. First is the key and second is the value. So my I'm mentioning here that keys are gonna be string and the values, they can be integers, uh, they can be string again and, and whatnot. In this case, I'm gonna go for integers. That means my keys are string and values are gonna be integer, but you can make the values as string as well, no big deal. Okay, so we have declared this, no issues in it. When you do this structure, that means you are using automatically the inbuilt new keyword. That means you are allocating the memory, but you are not initializing the memory. So later on, if I go up and say that the score for a person whose name is going to be mine, let's just say, and the score is 89 for some game, random game. And finally, I want to print out the score, uh, whatever there is inside the entire score. Now, as I save this, this doesn't give me any uh, error in the evaluation, but this code is going to give you an error and it's very important that you keep an eye on this error because you're gonna run that quite a number of times. So when I run this one, it creates a panic. We will discuss the panic later on, but it says assignment to entry in nil map. Basically the nil simply means there is no initialization of the memory. Memory was allocated to you, but it was not initialized for you. Now surely later on, we're gonna see that how we can fix that and use the new keyword, but right now that's not the point. So what you can do is you can just remove this war keyword here and basically what we'll be doing is we'll be using the make keyword. There we go. We refer that and we wrap everything inside the make. So I'm going to simply say make start here and this make is going to be ended up here. Now we are using the make structure here. That means now everything is going to be all good indentation a little bit and that's it. It's going to resolve the issue because make not only allocates but also initialize the memory. Let's give it a try. Let's go ahead and do that. And there we go. We see that there is a map which is having a key of Hitesh and the value of 89. 
Now, of course, not only that, we can add more values to it. So we are gonna simply say, hey, I have a score. I want to insert more values to in into it. So let, let's say there's a guy, Josh, who is scored uh, 34. I'm gonna make a couple of duplicates of that, in fact, four. And now let's go ahead and add the values of it. So any values will work. I'm just randomly pressing on my keyboard, whatever that is. So we got Hitesh, we got Josh. What else we are gonna have Ron? and we are gonna have Sam, and we are gonna have Vicky. There we go, so these are the four values, and now if I want to just simply have a print of the entire score, this is how it looks up. If I run that on the terminal, there we go. So nice map is given to me, separated by space, all the keys and values are being dumped in front of me. Okay, now in case you want to access a particular value, then surely you can uh, get that. So for example, uh, let's call it as get Ron score and score, there we go. And we can infer that I need to grab the value from score and the key is gonna be Ron in this case. So obviously then I can go ahead and simply print uh, this get Ron score. Save that without any surprise, it's gonna give us the value 23 because that's what Ron is holding up. That's a pretty obvious stuff, not really a big deal. Now one thing is uh, very important and interesting is the delete here. Now in the delete syntax, you can delete any particular value and this delete keyword is used with variety of data structure. If you want to use it with the map, first you have to provide that this is the map I'm referring to and the key that I want you to delete is gonna be, let's just say, Vicky. That's the one I'm interested in deleting. And then I can simply go ahead and print that. So this delete keyword, we definitely will talk a little more in the future, but this is what we have right now. Let's go ahead and run this one more time. And there we go, now in our map, we got Hitesh, Josh, Ron, and Sam, but no Vicky, we have deleted that. Now this is this bit of uh, section here is not for everyone because I'm gonna talk a bit about loops here. We haven't officially discussed loops. We will surely do that later on, but in case you are wondering that how we can actually loop through with these maps, I think that we can actually discuss that a little bit, but in case you have not much idea about the loops of keys and values and these objects and maps, uh, we will come back and visit this later on. So looping through these uh, key value pairs or maps is actually super easy. We can simply go ahead and say, this is my key, this is my value, and then we can infer that. Now, there is an inbuilt keyword here, range, and after that you can mention your map here, and that's it, that's the way. So these uh, inferation that is going on here for this score will automatically save all the keys and values. Now, there is a very important thing, the key and value here, don't get confused with the naming here. I can say them A and B as well. So A is gonna store all of the keys and B is gonna store all the values. Whenever you're gonna pass up only just one values, that means only key is being stored in that. So very important point. Let's come back onto the key and value. Pretty easy stuff. Moving forward, I can simply go ahead and say I want to print. Let's use a printf this time. And I want to print up, uh, we're gonna say score of, uh, Ron, that means I'm gonna use a, a, a empty space here, a container, which is gonna insert some values later on. I'm gonna say score of Ron is, and then again, person V, and I'm gonna use a slash in, then we are gonna have a key and the value. So there we go. So this is all what we are having and we are looping through. Let's go ahead and try to run that. And there we go, I can move it up, there we go. I can try to run it one more time, there we go. So we can see that score of Josh is here, Ron is here, Sam is here, Hitesh is here. And in case you are wondering why they are not in the exact order that we have defined, that's the exact point of having map. We don't need to rely on the order. In fact, we never rely on the order. We just worry about that information should be there and it should be easily accessible by just mentioning the key. They, its information is never in order. So there we go, that's your brief introduction to the maps in Golang, they are pretty fun. And always just remember two things up here, the difference between the new and make. And in case you want to have an access of all of these files, it's mentioned in the description section. Enjoy that and have a great day.